talk about uh, the name of I guess uh, we're, today we're going to talk about your you've created a Facebook group uh, on social on social media and um, you've you know we're able to sort of have a wide range of audience audiences throughout the last uh, year and a half it has been yeah. and what sort of brought you into sort of creating this group well it's uh, a good way of reaching out to people who want to who want to learn the language and so I created the Cree language videos for Facebook uh, about four or five years ago. And, uh, and so th in, the, in this site I post uh, lang Cree language videos. Uh, I, will, I will post grammar, grammar mm -hmm. items in there. And basically I found that if we have grammar, if we have uh, videos of grammar, if people see it and hear it, people tend to pick up a lot more. Uh, but the main thing that drove me to creating the site was uh, I was asked to do online Cree classes for our department and I wanted to provide videos for the online classes mm -hmm. but there was no, no way to do it the way w with uh, what we had to work with at that time so, so I created uh, PowerPoints and you cannot upload PowerPoints onto our online classes which is unfortunate. So I, I found out that we could actually make those PowerPoints into videos. And so once I made the videos, I posted the videos on Cree language videos. And from there, I took the, uh, the URL connection and posted them onto the online classes. So students were able to get the you know, mm -hmm. URL connection from there. And they just went right into the, uh, to the, um, into the Facebook page for that when they wanted to listen to that. So that started off with the, uh, with the stories, with the, uh, with the grammar lessons. Yeah. And then after that, I started doing the stories with the with, the, with the, the traditional stories, and so I posted a few of those on Cree uh, in Cree uh, during the Aboriginal language uh, Aboriginal storytelling month, which is February here in Saskatchewan. So I made some videos of me telling st stories and posted them onto this site. And uh, last year, last February, during the midterm break. I went to the first uh, Cree storytelling camp in uh, Big Stone Lake, just west of La Ranch. And so we told stories there d during the evening. And one of my former students, we videotaped, we videotaped the, uh, the stories, the storytelling. Mm -hmm. And one of my students, form former students, uh, took the videos and closed captioned wow. these stories, which is really good. So I have me telling stories and you can see the Cree right in there. And uh, so. So that's what that's one thing we did, and it's an exciting thing. So it all started off with 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 you um, needing to teach an online class, and thinking how can I get these stories, or how can I get these grammars or the teaching tools lessons mm -hmm. to students online and other campuses, and you yeah. just sort of created this Facebook. So it started off as a as a as a te uh, as a, an instructor slash student sort of driven thing. Mm -hmm. How did it kind of create from there? Was it just people? Because it's a, it's a it's a group on Facebook, yeah. and um, did it just was it students sort of you know sharing this with their families and friends? Oh, yeah. And then, you know, people being added to this group and it just sort of created a larger community. Is that how it it's sort of been, went? That's how it, it worked. As people would go onto the site and they'd get excited about the videos and then they'd want a copy of the videos, mm -hmm. which you cannot do yeah. on Facebook. It's yeah. really hard to, well, as a matter of fact, it's impossible to upload the videos from Facebook onto yourself. So uh, my son, who is an IT person, created a link for me to be able to do that. People can actually go into the sites and and, uh, and I provided a link where they could actually upload these videos onto a USB and use them. Now, the other teachers, in uh, Cree language teachers, want to use the grammar videos in their classes, but a lot of the First Nations schools do not allow their teachers to go on Facebook during teaching, teaching time. But there's nothing preventing them from using the, these videos off, off their USB. Yeah. So that was that was wonderful there. So um, the, students, the teachers were able to use these videos on, in their classes using the the link that my son provided. So by by able to by able to to convert um, these files, these they're basically online uploaded files into um, being transferred to for these uh, f you know potential students or uh, our teachers across these communities to sort of take those USBs and teach them in the class. Mm -hmm. um, have you gotten a lot of feedback or a lot of... Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but I'd say quite a bit of feedback. I've got a lot of people wanting these things 
and uh, the thing is they want the videos and I to show them the link on how to get the videos but then they want the PowerPoints from where I made these videos which uh, I can I email those vi those PowerPoints to them and so these are teachers and uh, I know of one student who actually made mp3 files out of all these videos so they could, she could listen to them in the car while she's driving <laughs> wow. so she hears the audio so it's, it's becoming useful that way too yeah. some people don't know people a lot of people don't know that they could actually make audio files out of these things you know it's just very simple to do actually it's the cree language is what is what this the, it started off as uh, teaching a cree language class what dialects do you teach in i teach uh, the y dialect and i am originally a uh, th dialect speaker Okay. So, I tend, I've been doing this for 30 years, right, and I tend to mix up my dialects still to this day. <laughs> you know, so, I'm glad that I work with other people in the, who are white dialect speakers, so they, they will correct me if I'm using a TH dialect uh, word in a class or in my, in my writing. They'll correct me on it, and then I'll have to go switch it to white dialect. <laughs> and go um, back to a TH dialect. So, how... You, you've mentioned that you've kind of started this about four or five years ago mm -hmm. and you know the, the success of this sort of uh, Facebook group and you've you've talked a little bit about how uh, you have students who have family members you just have you know community members and of, of wherever around in the world because Facebook is is an online social media yeah. uh, website so you really can reach someone from from here in Saskatchewan or all the way across the edge of the, the end of the world mm -hmm. um, have you ever had an experience with this program where someone was able to reach out to you in in, 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 in terms of feedback but really um, uh, like where how far do you have you been able to to reach with this London England really I've had, I have some somebody from London England who regularly goes onto the page and uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll, we'll put, put, point, put something in how, how happy it is to, to be able to listen to the story as I'm doing so. Wow. And, uh, a few years ago too, I, I, uh, we had put, uh, I had students in my uh, student project where they posted uh, and they created an online How to Save and Create booklet that we put on online. And somebody from England went into that site using that booklet, just a, just a booklet itself, no audio on there, but looking at the grammar from there, and he, was, and he actually wrote me a letter based on, based on that. I asked him, how did you write this letter? He said, you're online. Online. Oh, wow. wow, is that good? <laughs> just, just the initiative that the student took to be yeah. able to teach themselves to, these things, and it was great. So, Social media is great that way. Mm -hmm. and with the, with this audio link, with this videos on on free language videos, people are able to see it. Teachers out there want to use the videos that we have, and so I they'll contact me, and I'll send them the powerpoints for them, so they could use it. Mm -hmm. And I also show them how they could upload the videos themselves if they want to do it. So you have do you have a lot of other contributors other than yourself, uh, Cree language speakers who who regularly contribute to this? Uh, Not to that page, no. Page, but uh, there's another another page we saw keyword of the day, where people are asking for words, and we have uh, that is really active site. We have all people, all dialects, mm -hmm. contributing to that page for words, you know, which is really great. The great thing about Facebook is um, there there is sort of a it's easier to sort of calculate your feedback or the amount of people you reach based on likes, or uh, and and I think most recently a great way to a lot of people often share videos is through the through the sharing portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, do you get a lot of people who share your videos to their, their quite, Facebook pages? Quite yeah. a lot. They, they, they will hit the share button and off it goes. It's really nice to see. Yeah. And uh, Some of them do ask, you know, but then I usually tell them, if it's on Facebook, go for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't for want sure. It asking. <laughs> if I wanted to keep something to myself, I won't post it. You know, yeah. It's as simple as that. Absolutely. Um, how did this you, you mentioned like you, you mentioned that it started off with a student and, and teacher initiative um, but how do you see this uh, growing in the next two or three years I think in a few years people more more people will be willing to uh, to tell stories mm -hmm. and uh, and post them on the face on on the page and other people have created their own um, Facebook pages to teach the language uh, there's a 
There's a young student in Edmonton who created a cream morphology page. Morphology page with using, um, using she's just wonderful stuff. And so there's that, uh, it's a wonderful teaching tool for her. And her videos are just awesome, you know. And so we see this happening in social media, social media helping to save the languages that we have. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to see. Um, why is it important, in your own words, for, for you to, um, why do you see the success of this, uh, this, this sort of program or community, really an online community that you created? Why is it important to you? It's important to me because uh, one of the things, perhaps the most important thing that happened, that, that got destroyed during the residential school years, was uh, the, the loss of language that a lot of us faced during those years. Uh, but more, more importantly though, us, we were in school doing storytelling season, what they call storytelling season, because traditionally storytelling, story, stories were told in the winter time. And so we were away at school uh, during those times. So we no longer heard the stories, the traditional stories. And the traditional stories contained everything we needed to know on how to live in this world, you know. So, we, so we were missing out on our education because of being residential school days. But this offering, uh, this online thing, where the stories can be accessed at any time of the year, is perfect. It's a perfect way of getting those stories done. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about decolonization and reconciliation, and the only way that we could actually do that and be successful in decolonization is to get to know the stories, our traditional stories. You, you are in Lakota, and Lakota mm -hmm. has stories, mm -hmm. Cree has stories, and each of those, each of our, each of our, each of our tribes have our, our, our traditional stories that we need to get back to, because mm -hmm. this is where our education is on how to be who we are as First Nations people. And a lot of those, a lot of people don't know the stories, you know, so, so this site provides that opportunity for people to get to know the stories to hear them in the original language and to also see them written if they want to do it. A lot of people like writing stuff, writing stuff and so. Is there a, a sig it, there's a significant difference between stories being told in the, traditional stories being told in the English language than in, as opposed to the Cree language. Is, is that sort of one of the other drives that you've had is making sure a lot of these stories were told in the original language? Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of differences uh, with the like there's a lot of traditional stories that have been written down into English by ethnologists throughout history. And uh, we at, a, at a First Nations University have, uh, have INDL classes, Indian language classes, uh, Indian language, uh, Indian literature and translation stories, in, in, uh, Indian literature and translation classes, where we look at the collected uh, stories by ethnologists and uh, and look at the various versions of these stories and try to see okay where did something something lose in, in translation what got lost in the translation you know so a lot of people only have access to the english versions of these stories so it's important that we st you know, we tell these stories in the cree and start telling these stories in cree and dene and nakota dakota and uh, and solo and anishinaabe only in our, in our original languages, because that's where our stories, our, our lessons are, in the original stories. You know, there's some of the um, translated stories. I, uh, for example, a, a story called The Shut Eye Dancers, or The Dancing Ducks, that's been collected numerous times. Oh, oh God, I don't, know how many, I, don't, I don't know how many versions there are of that in English. And it's quite a lengthy story, uh, but one of the collections I saw was uh, the story itself written in three sentences mm. in English. <laughs> you know, so that's the kind of stuff you, you run into with these collections. You know, you get just shorten, mm -hmm. leave a lot out, a lot of the story out. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And but doing it with the original language, you get everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely. Um, you know, the starting of your program, it was, you, like I said, you it was a, a student uh, slash instructor initiative. Um, as an instructor, you're at the First Nations University of Canada. What does Indigenous education mean to you? It means going back to the stories. 
indigenous education means going back to the stories and finding out what the lessons are in the stories mm -hmm. and what is it that that what is there for people to be educated in. Mm -hmm. You know, it also means going back to the land and uh, putting and land-based education, which is a movement happening right now in some northern communities, and I think it's happening in Edmonton. It's also happening in Saskatoon. You know, land-based education, and that's part of indigenous education. And but the main thing about indigenous education is the sacred stories, reviving those stories. Going back to land-based, uh, uh, land-based education and, and and storytelling, what would your hope or your 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 hope for the future for that in the next, let's say, fifty years? How how what do you see indigenous education being more of? Our students being proud of who they are and what, what, where they come from. Yes, mm -hmm. so today there is a lot of young people thinking, asking, what good is our is our language? What's the use of learning our traditional ways? But this is the situation today. And with land-based education and indigenous education, the revival of our stories, I think those students will be able to say, wow, were we, is this ever great? Mm -hmm. You know, like going out in the springtime to go harvest uh, birch, bark syrup, birch bark itself, and then also getting uh, harvesting birch bark syrup during the springtime. You know, mm -hmm. students are doing that in northern, northern communities right now. On, on how to do that. I guess in the springtime, that's when you go out, get the birch bark, harvest the birch bark, for ba birch bark baskets, mm -hmm. and also get the syrup from the birch bark, from the, from the birch trees in the springtime, and to make your own syrup out of that. And it's just really wonderful. And uh, Churchill High School did that last year, took their, their, their students out to do things like that. I, I think that's definitely, yeah, like the future with Indigenous education is um, is about you know, going back to land-based things, and it's so interesting being able to talk with you today because you're you're going you're you're helping students and community members go back to to language and storytelling. But the interesting thing is, that I guess, the most unique thing about it is is you're using new technology to access that. And do you think that's a key point for a lot of the younger generations to connect with uh, generations now, younger generations now, is by using uh, new technologies? Uh, for this, or would you say, you know, a lot of it by using still using traditional methods? I think you have to go with both. I mean, we're we're traditional people, but being traditional, we were always open to trying something new. Mm -hmm. That's part of the thing of being about being traditional. We were very innovative in the way we did things. You know, like our people created and discovered things like canoes, snowshoes baby carriers, uh, what, cradle boards, that kind of stuff, right? Those must have come from somewhere. Those are new new developments during, the, during our time. So for, from way back then, people were developing new things all along the way. So being traditional, you have to say, okay, what's here in front of me? What can I use? What's in front of me is social media. We have it there. We have computers and we have students and children who are very, very interested in what goes on on the internet and how to ha and playing computer games you know like uh, some people are actually developing computer games in the languages which is something we need m more of you know hearing killing zombies in Cree would be great you know <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's uh, that kind of stuff needs to be done yeah. you know, need more work like um, 1985 I wrote a paper on using computers to teach Cree and at that time we were doing uh, we were doing uh, interactive fiction games in Cree. Very, very. <laughs> uh, that's nineteen eighty-five. So looking at it back then, right, it would be really primitive. So it's really been since you just mentioned since nineteen eighty-five. That's kind of always been uh, using computers or new technology has always been sort of um, something you were open to doing. Mm -hmm. Like really this this Facebook uh, group that you've created that and I don't even want to say it because I think it's an online community because you reach tons of people. This has been a vision of yours for the last, since 1985. Yeah, like that's I've been working with computers since 1985 and computer, computer generated uh, language assistance. And it's been wonderful. I, I, I love the computer stuff. And my kids have grown up with computers all their lives. So. And uh, so nowadays, I just sit back 
If I need help with computers, I'll call one of my kids. Help! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even bother wanting to know how to do things. So, yeah. I guess my son usually does this nice stuff for me. As um, as someone who really um, who really advocates for 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 the our, our indigenous languages uh, moving forward, what is something uh, a word of advice that you'd like to give to young people? Young people, uh, it's basically to keep on going, uh, you know, and persevere, uh, because a lot of young people will face discouragement when they try to talk their languages, because they face people people will. Uh, criticize them because they don't pronounce things properly uh, and they'll get laughed at for mispronouncing things. Sometimes you can't help the laughter because they end up say, swearing when they didn't want to swear. You know, I laugh at those situations uh, but the thing is to keep on trying and to know that to get something done you need to spend a lot of time on it. In, in order to learn something you need to spend a lot of time on it and that's where a lot of people don't want to do, don't realize that. You know, they figure it's here. I should know it right away. Mm. You know, like how long did it take you to read? Several years. Right. <laughs> Even now. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, and that's the thing. That's what people. A lot of people forget. You know, if, if they could keep in mind, how long did it take them to read? And use the same analogy to say, so how long is it going to take me to learn the language? What did I, What did I do to learn to read? You spent a lot of time at it, right? So that's what you need to do to learn the language. You need to spend a lot of time on it. And this is basically where need, people need to pay attention to. You need to spend a lot of time on there. You don't expect to learn something right away. Mm -hmm. And and that's do you think that's successful now that you have a lot of times uh, we look at Facebook on our phones. Mm -hmm. You know, even children can look at it on on playstations and things like that. Yeah. So uh, spending a lot more time would you say it's easier to ex it's more accessible this day and age let's say in the last 30 years to access the language mm -hmm. yeah i think it is it is more accessible to to do it because there are apps in in the la in certain languages cree has an app quite a few of them actually uh anishinaabe has an app uh, i don't know about nakoda or dakota i haven't seen anything to that effect yet and, but the other uh, languages in the states some of the languages in the states cheyenne has, has an app I don't know if Chickasaw has it, but uh, some of the other languages in the States have apps on, on there that you have. But it's really good. But uh, the thing is also, other First Nations people are actually starting to write their uh, their posts. What do you call them? Timeline. Facebook posts? Yeah. Facebook posts, yeah. Facebook posts. They're starting to write them in the, in the languages. Uh, in their languages. They may spell them wrong, spell wrong but that's okay. You know, because... You weren't a perfect speller from the beginning, or from the time you started trying to write, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You got the, that's another the thing they have to remember. They can't spell perfectly right away, but they're starting to write the language. A friend of mine just sent me an inbox message uh, yesterday in Navajo, of all things. <laughs> <laughs> so I just sent him back a, a message in Cree at the same time. You know? like, <laughs> so he but, probably got this message. And yeah, what is this? yeah, he says, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, what? In Navajo. And, God, he, he laughs at me when I tried my Navajo on him. Because you know, I cannot pronounce some of their, some of their, uh, some of their sounds in Navajo. Would you say learning um, Cree is... is uh, Especially here at the university, we've offered Cree throughout the years. Have you have you had any students come back to you and say, or our community members, and specifically say like the, these Facebook posts have helped me, you know, become better a big a better Cree speaker? Uh, no, I haven't had that. I haven't had that yet. You know, it's been nice to get that, but but uh, I have had students say that uh, people say that they appreciate my posts. I see that they see in on uh, on Facebook, and uh, the person from England is just awesome there because he's always forever talking about it, <laughs> how excited he is to get this stuff. And he he's not he's not he's not indigenous. He's that not person. indigenous at all. And uh, there's a, a an old man in North Carolina who is Anish Anishinaabe, uh, uh, originally Anishinaabe, but he lives in North Carolina, and uh, he comes in and. Uh, and, and writes in Cree. Uh, he's just learning this from the online from the online stuff because he's alone in North Carolina, right? <laughs> There's no Cree over there, so whatever he does in Cree is picked up from the social media. 
Mm -hmm. It's really good to see. Wow, that's really good. Um, I guess kind of the other thing is, if you had any um, any last thoughts about where you would like to see, you know, um, whether you'd like to see more programs like this online, or or how important it is to have different languages using these sort of things. Like, if if there's anything else that you'd like to add to that, well, it's just that. I'd love to see more activities online for other languages, and it is happening. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to see. Uh, the other thing that uh, is keeping us away from uh, a lot of us hesitate to post things online is basically traditional storytelling was traditionally done in the winter. And so come summer months, nobody wants to tell stories and post them online during the summer months. And uh, I have an older cousin who gets involved in Cree immersion camps during the summer months, and she actually tells traditional Cree stories during the summer months. And I thought, what is she doing? And I, you know, this is forbidden. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, this is the only time she has to, to be with these people, so she's open to telling the stories. You know, like we have to change new things. Traditions die if they don't change with the times. Mm -hmm. You know, so she's telling stories, the traditional stories in the in the in the in the, uh, in the summer months. You know, she's going to meet. She is meeting a lot of resistance, including from me. Mm -hmm. You know, but then I see her point. So I'm willing to do the stories in the summertime now because we need to change mm -hmm. a few things to be able to make these things happen and to be able to keep these stories going. Mm 